Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and this is the phone that a lot of people have been talking about recently. This is the Moto X. It's the first phone at the collaboration directly between Google and Motorola since Google bought Motorola Mobility more than a year ago. So we expected big things out of this phone, and now it's time to give it the full review treatment. So without any further ado, let's take a closer look at the Moto X. So yeah, this device is different. It's really different in a lot of ways from the competitors, and a lot of these differences come from Motorola taking bets on what the average consumer wants in a phone, not a geek. I made a video explaining this not too long ago. It'll be the first link right below that like button on this video. But from my perspective, a, a geek's perspective, actually giving the phone a chance, this phone really impressed me in a lot of ways. First of all, the design. This phone is a really subtle, compact, handsome design for a phone. Motorola basically decided that a phone with a rounded back is easier to hold, so they built it around that, and they built what I think is one of the nicest curves in any phone out there, much better to hold than what we saw attempted in the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. So the Moto X has a curved back and it fits well in the hand and it actually has a stacked battery inside to take up all that space. We'll get to the battery in a second, but basically this phone is packed to the gills with the internals. The storage is not expandable. It uses a nano SIM instead of a regular micro SIM. It's crazy, but the phone feels super solid. Oh, and it also helps that this phone has a rubberized back. So it's not glossy plastic like the Galaxy S4, but it's also not solid metal like the HTC One. So it's a nice sweet spot right in between, and I like it. It also has a dimple right in the middle of the back, and I just really like it for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I'm glad it's there. And again, that soft touch back is just a great feel for anything handheld. The one thing I don't like about the outside is the headphone jack being up on the top, but that's really a minor complaint, just a preference. But alongside that headphone jack, you will find a microphone. And you'll find another microphone in the chin of the phone, and yet another one on the back. So this phone has three microphones, essentially for noise cancellation to be able to isolate voices, which it'll need. Now inside the Moto X is the reason why a lot of spec heads have a hard time wrapping their head around this phone. So check this out. It's essentially rocking multiple CPUs, some of which are dedicated to certain tasks, all in order to optimize battery life. They call it the X8 system, and they're made up of the dual core main processor, a version of the 1.7 gigahertz Snapdragon S4 Pro, then it has the quad-core Adreno 320 GPU for graphics, and a dedicated core for contextual computing and gesture recognition, and another dedicated core for natural language processing and voice recognition. That makes eight cores in this phone, all handling their own power states to optimize different things. So how does the performance end up? Pretty damn well. Actually, it's scary good. It might not benchmark like a BIOS, but I can guarantee you it feels and performs like one every day of the week. It handles multitasking well, it handles scrolling well, it happens opening and closing apps well, very quick. It actually handles web browsing exceptionally well. In fact, this and the new Nexus 7 were the only devices that really glide through Google Chrome on any site I throw at it. Google Chrome has been notoriously a power sucker and can lag on a lot of these high-end devices, but it's crazy when you think about it, this device is one of the smoothest of them all. There's never any stuttering or lag in the UI like you might see in TouchWiz or HTC Sense, and overall this phone has been buttery smooth every second since I first got it, which is really impressive. I can't say the same about stuff like the Samsung Galaxy S4. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that number one, this is very close to vanilla Android, and number two, this is a 720p display. So this Moto X is rocking a 1280 by 720 Super AMOLED display, which means it has way less pixels to push around than a 1080p display, and the GPU doesn't have to work nearly as hard. But is this bad for the viewing experience? Short answer, nope. In fact, take it from me, someone who absolutely loves resolution and high pixel density, the only time I can see a difference between this and a 1080p display of the same size like the HTC One is when you put them side by side right next to each other. And the average person is never going to do that. The average person is never going to spot a pixel on this display. It comes in at 316 pixels per inch, right in line with the iPhone 5, and has a very bright saturated colors thanks to that AMOLED display. Nice contrast, nice viewing angles and everything. It was a little bit warm in color temperature and I would have liked it to be a little bit more accurate, but then again, that's what you expect from an AMOLED display. And you can really only tell the difference when you're holding it next to an IPS display. So yeah, I would say the trade-off Motorola made here was a good move as the display still looks tack sharp to my eyes and the frame rates are through the roof when compared to other 1080p phones. Also, the Moto X takes advantage of that AMOLED display with its unique notification peak system. So when your phone is not in use and it's facing up, like on your lap or on a table, it sort of breathes the notification peak in and out. And when you wanna check it, 
You just tap and hold and you can read your latest notification up top. All of the rest of your notifications will be shown down below and you can swipe down to unlock and get to those. Anytime you get a new notification, it'll take over the peak top window so you can peek that. I kind of wish I was able to peek at more than one notification at once, but for now, it's just the newest one, one at a time. Now, if any other smartphone without an AMOLED display attempted to do this kind of thing, it would burn through the battery life super fast. Since that is an AMOLED display, these thin white characters you see are the only pixels being lit. So the rest of the display is still off, so it really doesn't take much power at all. Now, I mentioned earlier that there's a dedicated core just for natural language processing on the Moto X, and that actually brings us to one of my favorite features on the Moto X, and even if it's not a feature that people are going to use all the time, I think it's going to impress a lot of people, and when a lot of people start to get to use this, they're not gonna wanna go to another phone that doesn't have this and that is the ability to speak to your phone and have it give you answers and perform actions without you even touching it or waking it. So the Moto X can be completely asleep and I can go, when I say I wanna ask for the weather and I just wanna know what the weather is outside, I can just say, okay, Google now, what's the weather outside? Now there's a little bit of a delay before it gives me the weather. And that's because it actually needs to finish listening and then wake up the Google Now service and then punch in all the information and then search it and then deliver the answer. So there's a little bit of a process, so it may not seem as natural and quick to just ask for the phone a question and have it immediately deliver an answer as if it was already awake, but it is a cool feature and I think a lot of people are gonna like it. Okay, Google Now, how tall is the Empire State Building? So this is another one of those things that most phones would chomp through battery if they tried since they'd be activating all of their cores to pull it off. The Moto X, like we said, has a dedicated low power chip just for this kind of stuff. It also recognizes your voice from when you first set it up and it actually does a really great job thanks to all those microphones of rejecting other noise and isolating your voice and not responding to other people who don't sound like you. But anyway, speaking of battery life, since clearly Motorola made an, a lot of decisions just for the battery life, the X8 chip, the 720p display, Turns out the battery life is really good. Now, Motorola claims 24 hours of battery life. Maybe a lighter user could get that out of it, but I didn't. But I still got an absurd number closer to 14 to 16 hours of battery life out of this phone. You really have to be using it all day to kill it. And it is most certainly a longer lasting phone than the Galaxy S4 or the HTC One. And the remarkable thing is this isn't even a huge battery physically. It's actually smaller than those other phones. It's a 2,200 milliamp hour battery but, you know, Motorola knows battery, and that's the thing. They've had a lot of experience with it. They made the Droid Razor Max. I am very, very pleased with the battery life in the Moto X, especially considering its size. And of course, on the back of the Moto X, you also have your camera. And on the back, what we're looking at here is a 10 megapixel sensor and a single LED flash. But more about the sensor, it's what they call a clear pixel sensor. And Motorola has never been really good with cameras, shall we say? I mean, they don't exactly have the highest end camera phones on the market. I was expecting this to be a little bit different, but I'll just go ahead and tell you now, it is not a good camera. It is the biggest disappointment of the entire phone. I'll go ahead and say it right now. The biggest, most disappointing problem on the Moto X is the camera. The RGB clear pattern layout is supposed to be better for taking in low light shots and getting in more light for faster shutter speeds. And it does do that. And that actually does work for getting more light. But overall, the pictures that it takes were extremely, extremely disappointing. You can activate the camera UI pretty quickly with a quick double rotation about its axis. So that's a nice shortcut. And then you'll get into the camera UI, which is pretty simple. Again, targeting iPhone users and the average people with this one, but it's at least decent looking. It's also really simple. I think my problem with the UI was that it was a little bit too simple. Like there's no way to select metering. So you just kind of have to trust that the phone gets the brightness right, but it's not always trustworthy if you have a very dark and a very light subject in the same frame. But otherwise, all the other controls are pretty easy to get to uh, with a couple of swipe gestures. But the picture quality itself, eh, not good. I would, I would characterize these shots I took with it as muted and soft muted with the colors and soft in the sharpness department. Just very, very consistently soft every time. Trust me, I checked to see if there was still the plastic over the lens so many times. It's not. The pictures, I they really are consistently this soft when compared to other smartphones. And it's even more noticeable when you compare it to something like the iPhone 5 or the Galaxy S4. Now, it's, it's fortunate that at least this is camera firmware. So the camera firmware and the image processing are something that can be updated via an over-the-air update. So in theory, Motorola could fix this with a quick software upgrade anytime they want, 
But for now, that is the biggest disappointment for me in the Moto X. And then there are, you know, little things like the software feeling slightly unfinished, maybe a bit rushed. You know, the AT&T model I have has this weird random gap in the notification bar every time I'm on Wi-Fi. Uh, and when you turn the quick toggle sideways, they get a little weird and they don't take up all the space. And even that translucent on-screen navigation bar at the bottom, while I like that, it's really good, uh, it's also pretty inconsistent. And they're sometimes they're clear, sometimes they're black. Again, if Motorola is listening, these things can be fixed with software updates, but right now they are the biggest complaints. Also about the speaker on the back, it's crisp and loud, but it's also quite small and can easily be muted with a poorly misplaced finger. Check this out. But you know what? Beyond all its little minor shortcomings, I really love using the Moto X. It's been one of my favorite phones to mess around with in a long time. And it's about the experience and it definitely delivers way beyond what a lot of us expected it to when we looked at the specs. You know, thin bezels, lovely typing experience, nice compact design, sharp, crisp, bright, colorful display, a great performer. It's just a lot of fun in a little box and it's probably perfect for someone coming from an iPhone or any first time Android user. And on top of all of that, on top of everything we just talked about, this phone has a customizable look. This is a massive differentiator. That's just like icing on the cake for this device's appeal. You can pick your back color, there's a ton of those. Your front can be black or white and you can pick the trim color that goes around the camera ring and volume buttons. So you can, for the first time, really make this device your own and get it to your doorstep in the United States in just four days, starting in September. So fingers crossed for international availability ASAP. We know it's coming, it's just a matter of when. So in the end, the Moto X is definitely a really nice phone, especially to use and to hold. It definitely feels really great in the hand. And for this reason, this is going to be a phone that I recommend a lot of people who are using Android for the first time switchers from the iPhone, from Windows phones, from Blackberries, from other smaller phones, because this is incredibly easy for them to get used to in terms of size and in terms of functionality, because this is stock pure Android and it'll likely be getting Android 4.3 pretty soon. And even if it's not appealing to us geeks, us pixel junkies who love the bigger display of the Galaxy Note 2 and the Note 3 soon, and all kinds of other incredibly high-end specs and processing power, even if it's not appealing to all of us, I think this phone is going to sell better than a lot of other devices we've seen recently. And I think it's a pretty awesome first step in the collaboration between Google and Motorola. So either way, that's been the Moto X review. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to share this around with your friends. I spent a lot of time on this review video. So if you have any other questions that I missed, there's a comment section open right below that like button for you to just open up and just tell us about what you need to know about the Moto X. I'll answer it there. And also, if you wanna see more videos like this, there's a subscribe button below for you too and hopefully you'll be able to get more videos in the future. Either way, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.